Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to take a look at how to green screen headphones over the top of a tracked piece of video. First we're going to take a look at it from a simple view, which is to say, how do we track these bubbles over the top of this? And then we'll look at it and how we deal with it in a green screen way. So I'm going to cover up these bubbles, they're all the same clip. Right click and choose new compound clip. This merges them all together for easy use later. Next, I pull it up a row and I'm going to import some footage. This is of a man on a high wire. I'll layer it under him, and now we've got the bubbles popping up on top of the man. Still not what we want though. We're looking to track these against it, right? So I'm going to highlight both of the clips, right click and choose new fusion clip. Now that I've got the sparkles in the bottom right hand corner, I can click to fusion. Here, fusion sets up a simple merge node for me. And I'm going to rearrange it just so it's more to my liking. The green comes in on top of the yellow. And so I always like the media for the green to be on top and the yellow on the bottom. Now what I need to do is figure out a way to track what this man is doing. I've got the footage on top of it. The bubbles pop up, but they aren't tied to him. So I'm going to replace this merge node with what is truly another merge node. Except for this one's a special type. It's called a tracker. And I hit shift and spacebar and then type track to be able to select my tracker. Now I've got my footage coming in from the left, that's the man walking, and the footage on the top is the bubbles. But I have to figure out a way to tie the bubbles back to the man walking. To do that, I highlight the tracker, and the tracker gives me some options in the right inspector panel. Notably, I can come into it and create a track which I use for the top node to track over the top of the bottom one. So, clicking tracker, I now go over to the right hand side and I see, sure enough, when I've highlighted that in my second viewport window, I've got a green track directly over the window. I'll position that over his helmet because that looks like a high contrast zone and I'm messing in the bottom right hand corner here to pick which color channel might give me the best track. It appears that the red will, but I can do even better by moving the crosshairs directly over one of the edges of the helmet. And now when it tracks, I'll use the track forward button to track. Interestingly, if you hit the play button down here on the bottom left, that doesn't do it for you. It'll just play the footage. So you need to hit track forward. And there we go. It's mapping through and creating the track. You can see the wavy track line in the green. Now that's good. And I'm able to now use the secondary panel in the inspector profile there under tracker, and I'm going to pick an operation. In this case, I'm choosing operation match move. Match move is now going to take the foreground and put it over the background matching the movement of the tracker. Well, that sounds exactly like what I want. So with media in on top, you may not notice at the point, but it's going to start moving up and down with the man's head bobbing. What we need to do is get it smaller. So I'm going to hit shift, space, and transform, and that's going to give me a transform node that I've added in between the two. This allows me to resize it as well as reposition it by using the center. With it positioned where I want it, now when I play forward, I can watch it bubble along in his head. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it looks like it picked up the node a little bit late into this. So if you've ever had this problem, I can tell you what the challenge is. You highlight your tracker node and check this out. It's really not working. So if we highlight the tracker node, I can tell you exactly what's going wrong. The tracker node has only been tracked from about a third in. I need to track it backwards and track the entire clip. Can't just start here halfway or else it won't have any track data. So I'm going to track backwards and now I've got a full track. With the full track, I'm now able to transform and map this man's helmet to the bubbles the entire way. Okay. Cool, John. Nice job. But what if we want to use, I don't know, something a little more interesting, like green screen data? Hmm, interesting. So I've got footage from a green screen that I'll pull down, and this is headphones, which are just rotating. I don't really need anything above the transform I had earlier. So I got rid of the transform, I got rid of the original media in, and now I've got headphones over the top of the man walking. Here, I have an option. How am I going to, one, shrink this down, well, I think we know a transform node does that. But how am I going to get rid of this green screen stuff? Well, the first thing I'll do is shift, spacebar, type delta, and choose a delta key. Here. If you didn't catch that, I grabbed the eyedropper, dropped it over the green, and boom, perfect key. Fantastic. Now it's shift, spacebar, and transform. Shrink my transform down. 
move it up behind the man's head, and I didn't even have to retrack because the tracker data stays in the tracker note. Now when I play, the headphones are bouncing along behind the man. If this has been helpful to you, feel free to buy me a coffee over at buymeacoffee.com. Hey, but otherwise, no obligation. I just appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking with me through this. Hope you have a great day.